Ladies and jellyfish, let me explain. I need to explain something. Today, how do I explain this? We're going to watch Let Me Explain. Studios. Oh! Rebecca Parham, we are back for round three. I absolutely adore this channel. It's got something different. There's something special about Rebecca's videos. I just can't put my finger on it, but I wish someone could explain it to me. Wait a minute. Today, we are going to look at some of the essential viewing, which actually also ties into the new stuff. We are looking at the daycare story saga. And then we're gonna finish off with one quick silly one. So people, are you ready? Once this is done, you better make sure you check out her channel or I'm coming for you. We're gonna have a problem if you don't support the original creator. Daycare story. We're gonna do this one, then we're gonna do the sequel, and then we're gonna do the sequel. Okay, here we go. Robert IDK. Let me explain. Studios. Tres, dos, uno. Go. Ah, <sighs> soothing. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodalallies. Rebecca Parham here. So, did you know I was a daycare kid? No. Probably not, because I've never mentioned it before. Makes sense, given that mom and dad were both working parents and leaving one's infant at home alone is generally considered problematic. Dad. Now, I know it might be hard to believe, but I haven't always been the pinnacle of refinement and maturity <laughs> that you see before you today. No, no. As a kid, I was a bit of a rascal. For example, the box story. The box story. Yeah, no, I did not know you were a daycare kid. However, if you gave me three guesses after looking at the title and thumbnail, I could have maybe put it together, but I might need it explained to me. Now at this daycare, we had a big playroom, and in this playroom, there was a dark little alcove where custodial stuff and equipment was kept all the time. And one morning during playtime, I noticed someone had left a large box there. Ooh. Big enough for a child to hide behind. Yes. Now there's a concept that I call kid logic, and it's basically just a name for that randomness that kids possess, or the absurdity that is their reasoning sometimes. For example, when I saw that box, that's when my kid logic kicked in, and I said... I'm gonna hide behind that box for as long as possible and see what happens. Uh -huh. This is a great idea. Yeah, that's so stupid. <laughs> do kids even do that now? Now that we have so much more fun stuff to do as kids. No, well, not me, but kids now. The video games are so much more fun than hiding behind a box. Can you imagine how much pointless, boring stuff kids used to do before video games existed at all? Now, me personally, hiding behind a box, you're not gonna catch me doing that as a child, or now. But what I would do as a child, no, 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 not behind the box, put me in the box, tape it up, and roll me around, baby. Roll me around. That was what I did in boxes. And hey, I know what you're thinking. Well, that explains a lot. Don't, don't say that, that's mean. So when the adults weren't looking, I slunk behind the box and crouched down, hiding yes. myself entirely. So fun. I must have stayed there for half an hour before playtime ended, and so they ushered fun. all the kids away to a different room for a new activity. And funny enough, the adults were none the wiser I was gone. <laughs> I've beat the system. Now this is what gets me. It took an hour of me hiding before an adult came back to the room and visibly began looking around for something. Uh... Couldn't imagine what it might be. Now where did I leave that small child? <laughs> Must be around here someplace. I peeked my head up over the edge of the box to watch, but that proved to be my undoing. I was spotted. I've been compromised. I got in big trouble for that, of course. I was clearly not good at getting away with things when I was a kid, as you'll see in the next story. What a boring thing to do. Hi just hiding behind a box. Rebecca, I guarantee what your class did would have been so much more fun. Like, what did your kid brain think? Like, oh, if I hide here for an hour and I'm not caught, I get kid experience points that I can use to level up my stealth? Like, what could you possibly see as the benefit? Like, the teacher's gonna come back, whoa, you did it, that's so cool yeah said no teacher ever now one time at this daycare they brought in a whiteboard and you were only allowed to draw on it with adult supervision okay okay i won't draw on the board instead i stole a green dry erase marker when uh, no one was looking and proceeded to what? decorate my face what? Hey, listen i didn't break the rules they specifically said don't draw on the board they said Come nothing on, about man. my face man. i put the marker back and walked away but was promptly spotted by an adult Becca, did you do this to yourself? 
No. <laughs> it was Timmy. Did do this to you? Yes. <gasps> Who did it? Oh, no. Well, sheesh, I hadn't thought I had that far. And I honestly didn't even think to blame another kid. Instead, good. that good old kid logic kicked in. And I came up you with a foolproof story that was sure to get my hide out of trouble. I was minding my own business looking for something to play with. And then the Marcus came over <laughs> and marked on my face. Nailed it. Yes! I will never understand how that daycare worker kept a straight face. But off to time out I went. Absolute, Absolute goofery. goofery. Absolute, Absolute tomfoolery. What is it also with kids drawing on themselves with marker? <laughs> I was never a kid who did that because I just felt dirty when I did that. It's like, it's chemicals. It's like, even as a child, I was like, I don't want chemicals just on my skin. There were certain people in my class who would draw all over themselves with markers and I can't imagine. I don't understand. Like who would ever put ink just into their skin and just let their skin absorb ink. Who would ever do that? Seems really bizarre to me. I don't know why anyone would do that. So, what are you in for? Disrupting the status quo? <laughs> Whoa, I stuck gum up my nose. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that my sister Rachel also went to this daycare. And because she's two years older than me, she got to be in the big kids program called the Superstars. Whoa. And I was so jealous that I took to calling them the Stupid, stupid Stars. Stupid Stars! Oh! Extra crispy on them. It seems like you would care a lot about Stupid Stars, considering you are one. I'll deal with you after class. It is after class. But one thing that will always be a significant memory to me is the day I discovered that the Superstars had a Nintendo. Bro. Better yet, they had Super Mario Brothers. And that, my little oodle-ollies, was the first time I ever saw a console wow. video game. I thought I was looking at magic. And you just had no idea how to turn that thing on. The NES to a child? Like, I had no idea. I had no idea how to turn it on. Actually, I do wonder, anyone who was like a small child a few years ago, is it still hard to turn on a console by yourself? Because I remember turning on the Super Nintendo, it's like, oh, turn on this TV, TV video, this box, boom. And plugging in the color-coded RCA cables, which seems like the easiest thing in the entire world was just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna break the TV. How can you possibly figure this out? Was it, is it still hard now? Because I feel like the number of steps hasn't gone down. Anyways, insight. And that became the only thing I ever wanted to do at playtime was go over to the big kid <sighs> area and watch them play Super Mario Brothers. Don't you dare tell me that gamers aren't real entertainers. I was watching people <laughs> play video games long before the appliers and septic eyes and deep eyes of the world made nice, a thing. Nice, nice. But when playtime was over, the daycare staff had to pry me away, kicking and screaming from that TV set. One day, however, I came up with a brilliant idea. When they pulled me away from the big kids' corner and sat me down with the other little kids, I proceeded to scream and cry <laughs> that I miss my big sister. Oh, and nothing was going to me except being allowed to be with her in the big you kid liar. area. I guess the adults didn't know what else to do, so they actually let me go back over. Holy Crayola, that actually worked. Sure enough, I made a beeline for the Nintendo. Screw you, sis, I got <laughs> video games to observe. It didn't take long for an adult to catch on, and I was eventually pulled away again. I don't think I ever just cried to get what I wanted. I don't think that ever happened. I don't think there was ever a time when I was a kid where I cried and was... I mean, maybe as a baby. I, I mean, every baby does that, sure. But as a child, where I, like, could think my own thoughts and make decisions, I don't think I ever tried that. To me, it just seems like the worst thing ever. You know? Like, if my child, if my, like, child as a toddler or whatever ever tries that, it's like, bro, no. We are not gonna let that happen, bro. We are not letting that happen. When I tried the same shtick, they gently said, Becca, you say you miss your sister, but every time you go over there, you, you just watch the them play video games. Okay, maybe they had me there. I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty solid accusation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, grown-up, I'll concede to you this time. But one day, I'll be grown-up. And I'll watch all the video games I and want. And now she does. Don't you mean play them? No. Now I've <laughs> saved the best story for last. Even when I started kindergarten, there was no escaping this daycare. Because one of the services they provided was picking up children from my elementary school and taking them back to the daycare where the parents could pick them up later. 
So every day I didn't get picked up by a parent or get on a normal yellow school bus, I waited for a big white van. <laughs> that sounds rather nefarious now that I say it out loud. But yeah, Rachel and I would wait for the van, pile in with the other kids, and go wait to get picked up at the daycare. And this was a routine my kindergarten teacher knew. She was a very good teacher and kept track of the way each of her students were supposed to go home. Good. So she would make sure I got in that van. Good. Well, I was getting a little bored of the routine. And here's good old kid logic again, because many of my classmates would get to walk home. And for some reason, oh, no. I decided that was the cool thing no. to do. No! I aspired to walk home. Oh, no. You got me beat on that one. I was, no, I was a little wimp. I didn't want to walk in the streets by myself, the mean streets of Canada by myself. That does freak me out. And it's like, they talk about this. I don't know how real this is, but they talk about it's like more dangerous now. Cause like the whole thing back in the day was like, oh, you could just let your kids out and run around the streets. And as long as you come back when the street lights come on, you're all good. But like, I don't think there were less killers at that time. I definitely don't think the world was safer. I think they just did that. But still, I was a wimp. It wasn't happening either way. But that wasn't gonna happen with Miss Responsibility Pants botching my whole operation. So like the little you devil I was, life. I waited until we had a substitute teacher. Oh. All right, here's your evil genius learner's permit, kiddo. When school ended that day, instead of getting into the daycare van, I hid oh, behind no. a brick pillar and waited for the van to leave without me. Funny how my sister oh, never said awful. anything. She must have been like, all right, I guess she died. As soon as the van left, I headed off on foot. My house was within walking distance, only about a mile away. But I began to think as I walked that no one was actually going to be at the house and I had no way of getting inside. Probably should have thought of that before. Just like the roof story. This is just like the roof story. Rebecca seems to like getting stranded in the most boring situations ever. She really likes to just chill behind a box in a closet on the roof with nothing to do and outside the house that you can't get in. Sounds like an absolute blast. It's a very good thing you discovered video games, Rebecca. So instead of walking home, I made the executive decision to walk to the daycare instead. Oh. Good, now, good. I knew, I knew what I was doing was against the rules, because every single time I saw a white vehicle of any sort coming in the distance, I would duck behind <laughs> a tree or bush as fast as I could. When I was so close that I could see the daycare up ahead, I noticed what was most definitely a white van approaching. And the only tree immediately available was thinner than me. <laughs> so not only was this tree already insufficient at hiding me, but when I jumped behind it, I didn't think to put the tree between me and the line of sight of the van. <laughs> so when the daycare staff approached, this is what they saw. What the heck? I'm revoking that evil genius learner's permit. They stopped the van, made me get inside, and guess who I found in the back seat? Your sister. The snitch that ratted me out. My own sister. Good. It's How good that she did. How could you? We were brothers, you and I. Wait. Honestly, this this makes me wonder how many dumb things Rebecca would have gotten stuck in if her sister wasn't around. How could your sister do such a horrible thing as a uh, stop you from getting kidnapped? Absolutely despicable. I can't believe she would do that. You know, you poor, poor thing. Anyways, that was fun. And so now we can watch Rebecca's most recent video. Daycare Stories 2. Do, 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 this do, do, is do, that do, 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 new. And since we're watching that new, new, you better make sure you're subscribed to Rebecca. Don't make me come after you. And I mean, if you want to, you know, also subscribe to this channel. That would be so cool. And if you haven't already booped the like button on this video, if you could take a second on full screen real quick, click the button, come back in. If you did it while I was saying that, you'd already be done. But I'll give you a couple more seconds anyways. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're the best. Okay. Daycare stories. Numero. Ni ichi ni san go. Oh, good evening, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodle allies. You're just in time for tea. 
You know, the last time we were sitting at my dining room table, we were talking about daycare stories, right? Well, who doesn't love a good sequel? Let's jump back to the good old days of making daycare staff miserable. If you remember that last video, you'll remember that my sister Rachel and I went to this daycare together. She was with the big kids, I was with the little kids. But the two of us had been going to this particular daycare literally from infancy. So the staff knew us and we both had reputations. Rachel's nickname at this place was Rocky because she would start fights with oh, older wow. kids who were being mean. While I, well, when I was about 18 months, I would go up to other kids just learning how to walk and push them over. What? <laughs> Laughing maniacally. What? Actually, I guess I need to chill. I need to chill before I accuse because when I was a child in my first year of playing hockey in Canada as a Tim Hortons Timbits League player, you couldn't get penalties back then. You know how in hockey, if you, you know, trip someone or push them from behind or punch them in the face without consent, you'll get a penalty for that? Yeah, well, when you're a Timbit, no one cares. <laughs> so if if the puck's over there and someone's in front of me, you're getting hooked. You're getting hooked. I'm gonna just take my stick and trip you and you're gonna fall over and they're gonna do nothing about it. Kind of insane. I don't know how I didn't grow up to become more violent. Listen, I got my devil tree out early. You best be thankful that I'm a good witch of the woods now. A typical day of daycare for the parent sister started early in the morning getting dropped off by a parent. And the experience was very different depending on which parent dropped us off. Wow. See, Rachel and I didn't like that our parents were leaving us. Frankly, we weren't that thrilled being left at daycare to begin with. But we knew to keep that sentiment to ourselves whenever mom dropped us off. Ooh. She was incredibly no-nonsense, and our tears and screams would do nothing to sway her. She'd just drop us off and sashay herself out the front door without looking back. So we learned that her heartstrings couldn't be played on. But if dad was dropping us off... What? What? You're gonna convince dad to stay home from work? Or would he get you a Slurpee to appease you? What? Why would, what, How did you what, it, wait, when, when dad dropped, what? Jesus! There's a game that both kids and adults play. When little kids play it, it's called dig in a random spot and hopefully find something. When adults play it, it's called Minecraft. <laughs> Digging in dirt or sand to a kid, it's, it's magical. Mostly because of the slim chance that you might actually find something. Very, very slim chance. Has anyone, have any of you ever dug a random hole and actually found something? Something that wasn't completely pointless? Like I can imagine digging a hole and finding like a little plastic dinosaur or toy that you're never gonna play with. You know, something something stupid like that. And it's like, wow, I found that. That was worth the time and effort of digging the hole, for sure. It really wasn't. But there were two main things that we were all digging for as kids. Gold. Say it with me. Buried Gold. treasure and dinosaur bones, which makes archeologists I and paleontologists wrong. adults that never outgrew it. I caused some major property damage at daycare once by digging. You wanna hear about it? Of course you do. Yeah. One day, two kids and I were playing outside in a secluded, shady part of the playground around the back of the building, a spot conveniently difficult for the adults to supervise. The three of us were happily digging away in the dirt when, gasp, we actually found something. <laughs> That's the best thing about the positivity and the optimism of kids. It doesn't matter what you found <laughs> while playing this game, you still felt like Indiana Jones. Yeah. And the three of us were thrilled that we had unearthed the rare and elusive water pipe. <laughs> it belongs in a museum! But the yeah, moment you the three of us walked now. away for just a second, leaving our dig site unprotected, a random boy saw the exposed <gasps> pipe in no. the ground, no, 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 picked no, up no, a no, big no. rock, no! and... He took all the blame. And they had to shut down the water at the daycare oh for a few my days gosh. to get it fixed. That's crazy. That is crazy and terrifying. Few things scare me more than just a water pipe bursting and you can't get to it. You can't fix it. Who are the people that dug all these holes in the ground to get water going? Do we ever sit and appreciate those people? The fact that we can just get water wherever. My current place, I think, has four sinks. No, no. Okay, no, 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 no. It has five sinks and two showers and two bathtubs. So there are nine places where water will, I, I can just get water wherever. I could run them all at the same time if I wanted to, which I will never do because I care about the environment. Thank you. But the people who dug the 
just dug, made the pipes in the ground and made that possible? It's like roads. You know, there was a time when we just didn't have roads and now it's just like, oh, roads. Road work ahead, I, I sure, sure hope, hope it does. does. You know? I do think about that sometimes. It's like the people who just made this road so long ago. Crazy. However, this next story, I absolutely got caught in the act and I'm pretty sure it's one of those universal childhood experiences. Okay, let's Tis see. Tis a dangerous and often hilarious thing the first time a child figures out that hair is meant to be cut oh, no. and scissors are meant for cutting. Oh no. We all put two and two together real fast no. eyeballing those craft scissors in our school supplies. There was only one incident I tried to cut my own hair as a kid and it was at daycare. Of course, it happened during arts and crafts. I don't even remember what we were making, but it involved scissors, and the person who was supposed to be watching us made the fatal error of oh, no. looking away for just a second, because that was all the time I needed. I grabbed a piece of my hair, Rebecca, raised no. the scissors up, Are you gonna cut and your finger? Your finger? Oh. Rebecca, don't you even think of... <sighs> Don't even think about it. Yeah, I think they were thinking about it by the time they started. So, uh, already lost on that one. I'm just glad she didn't cut the fingers, because that's... I cut my own hair, if you couldn't tell. You can't go into a barber shop and ask for the Robert IDK, because only Robert IDK does this. Anyways, to this day, it's like... I'm really scared to like cut my fingers with scissors. As a child, that freaks me out. I could never trust a child with scissors to cut their own hair. Also, aren't you supposed to have like safety scissors as a child? Would those even cut hair? You might be able to avoid these issues if you use safety scissors. Anyways. A wise thing, not leaving me alone to my own devices. She sat at her desk writing down this little incident in my report card. Oh. Niche. Well, your I permanent had a record. And not move. But every time another staff member walked in, this lady would say something like, Hey, do you want to see what happens when Rebecca tries to cut her own hair? Oh, okay, Janet. I don't recall asking your opinion on my hairdressing skills, but if we're going to start playing the shame game, I'm going to let Kid Becca have Get him! Get him! My hair's bad, but you paid someone money to make you look like that. Ah! Well, let's go! Ah! Savagery. You can tell that came from a real place. <laughs> that came from a real place and it's called Supercuts. <laughs> Just kidding. Supercuts don't, uh, don't knock on my door with uh, papers. Yeah, that staff member was just having their moment of power. It's so funny when you, if you work for a school, if you're a staff member of a school, you just live in kid land. You live in the land of kids. And so the most important thing in the world is something so stupid. Hey, other adults walking by, you want to see what happens when Rebecca tries to cut her own hair? This is so bad. This is such important information. You care so much. Like, <laughs> you live in kid land. You think the dumbest stuff is important. If I was there and someone tells me that, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, have a good day. I was just walking to the, to the water cooler. Thank you. You think my hair is bad, but you paid someone money to make you look like that. <laughs> if you let me do your hair, it would at least be an improvement. I don't get paid enough for this. And I don't get paid anything to tolerate you, but here we are. Hello, okay, Mrs. Okay, you Param. didn't say that. Yes, it's Rebecca again. Mom, I saved you money on my next haircut. <laughs> okay, I didn't actually say any of that. But man, I wish I was a fire-breathing roast lord back in the day. Then maybe I would have become an actual stand-up comedian instead of an animator pretending to be one. Did you hear the one about crypto? It's okay, I'm pretending to, Rebecca. I'm pretending to be a stand-up as well. I gotta try it sometime. Well, actually, I do intend to go on tour eventually, and I think it'll be like a combination of like stand-up comedy and music and video and stuff like what I already do. It's gonna be really fun. When I eventually do go on tour, I will finally be able to consider myself somewhat of a stand-up comedian, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways, I am off topic. So as I've said before, Rachel was in a different group than me and we had different activities, so we didn't always get to hang out with each other. But one day, while I was innocently playing Thomas. with my fellow little kids, an adult plucked me away from whatever I was doing and sat me at a table with Rachel far away from the rest of her group. It was unmistakable she had purposely been isolated from the other kids. All right, what did you do? You haven't confessed, have you? Demand an attorney, they can't prove anything. <sighs> what actually happened was the staff had planned an activity where each kid was given a glob of peanut butter that they could sculpt what? into whatever they wanted. What? And the best part was that they would eventually get to eat their creations. What? The problem was, ever since childhood, Rachel has been deathly allergic to peanuts. Seriously, yeah, don't do that at all then. Time. She's that sensitive. I once opened a particularly potent jar of peanut butter, closed it after just a few seconds, and when Rachel walked through that area a minute uh... later, her eye began to swell. 
God. There's no way, there's no way they would do peanut butter sculptures in school now. I feel like any school or daycare that has a peanut butter sculpture, like, they're gonna get shut down. They're gonna get shut down. You can't take that risk. Peanut butter sculptures? Could there be anything worse? There's literally, you could even do peanut butter sandwich making, and it wouldn't be as bad for a kid with nut allergies in the corner then. Let's dump the whole jar, mush it around, and get all those particles in the air. There literally could not be a worse thing to do when kids could be allergic to peanuts. That that is terrible. Terrible. So naturally, Rachel was not going to be allowed to play with the world's deadliest substance to her. Instead, they gave her some Play-Doh and made Aww. me come play with her so she wouldn't be alone. Yay! Wow, that sounds like such a wholesome sisterly moment, huh? Am I right? So, in, sorry, I, I need to rant a little bit more. I'm not done. Even if they separated them into separate rooms, which I don't think they did, but maybe they did. Even if they did that, all those kids, do you really think all those kids are going to fully cleanse themselves of the peanut butter when they're done? You can make them wash their hands, sure. Peanut butter gets in there. Not only that, they're making sculptures. The particles are getting on them. Ah. This is grossly irresponsible. Grossly irresponsible. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kid Becca, it's a wholesome sisterly moment, right? Officer, right. I've never met this girl before in my life. Also, I should have peanut butter. Hey! Don't you try to drag me down with you. Mind you, I did sit there the whole time playing with Rachel, just very angrily. But when the activity was over and Rachel was far away, they eventually gave me oh a little spoonful gosh. of peanut butter for my trouble. But oh my god, what an absolute brat, right? Never mind that it's a life or death situation where you could have one less sister by the end of the day. Yeah. But hey, listen, I was not always inconsiderate of my sister. Sometimes I was very helpful. You all know about Smarties, right? Not the good kind, the American kind. Oh, wait, no, 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 you're not Canadian, are you? Or British. I guess in Britain, Smarties are the same. Actually, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. From San Antonio, Texas. Okay, well, at least you know about the good Smarties. Yo, all of my Canadians watching. We grew up where these were Smarties. It's a hard shell with, you know, really good chocolate and they're flat and browned and it's awesome. These right here, they were amazing. But in the States, we could called these rockets in Canada. These were rockets. If you tell an American, yo, I'm gonna eat some Smarties, I'm so excited, they're gonna be sick. An American's like, Smarties are like the most like meh, just sugar filled nonsense that you can have. Like they're fine, but they're just pure sugar. Wait, why does this say Smarties and made in Canada? Am I going insane? These were rockets. What on earth? We're not done here. Nestle is the biggest food company in the world. Okay, then why? What? Where are Smarties chocolate? Nestle's largest production facility for Smarties is in Toronto, Canada. But are we talking about the chocolate one? It said that this was made in Canada. I came into this with more questions than answers. Anyways, any Canadian watching or maybe some other people, these are the good Smarties. And if you ever get the chance to have some, you should do it, unless you're allergic. You all know about Smarties, right? Not the good kind, the American kind. Yeah. The bishop on the chessboard yeah. of loser candy. I will hear no arguments to the alternative. Well, this daycare was no stranger to giving out this candy as the occasional treat. And one day, Rachel apparently had gotten her hands on a pack of them. Whoa. The two of us were in nap time together when she rolled over and whispered, Hey, hey, Becca, guess what? What? I got Smarties. I got a Smarties stuck up my nose and I can't get it out. Oh. <laughs> now, as a bright young child with plenty of potential to eventually maybe one day be smart, I had a perfect plan of attack for the occasion. Oh, no. I got a stick. No! We all stuffed random things into our pockets as kids, and apparently I had a stick that day. Whatever you do, don't move. I shoved the stick up uh, Rachel's nose to try and get the Smarty out. And as one would imagine, a stick is not the most effective nor sanitary tool for such a job. So all I really accomplished was pushing it further up her nose. Oh my ah, god. Ow! Ah. Uh, this may turn into brain surgery soon. Just as I thought the Smarty could go no further up Rachel's nose, a daycare staff member walked by and was treated to this cheery sight. <laughs> Hey, 
hey, wouldn't you know it, that little extra push caused it to dislodge and fall down the back of Rachel's throat. Yay! Almost dying. Good job. I'm surprised that actually worked. That is like the worst nightmare. When you get something stuck in your no- I actually can't even relate. I've never had anything just stuck in my nose. Squidward, why are you wearing my hat on your nose? I think the universe already felt they cursed me enough in the nose department, and so they were like, at least we'll make you smart enough to not shove something in there. <laughs> That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. Well, there you go. Crisis averted. You know, my dad used to tell people that I was smart enough to be a doctor. I think he was lying. Listen, 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 listen. Everybody is smart and stupid in their own ways. Oh. It's okay. I am very smart with certain things. I am really dumb with other things. If you watch my channel enough, you can probably figure them out. So maybe you're smart enough to be a doctor for everything but noses. Let, let's go with that, Rebecca. And that was Daycare Stories 2. We are gonna end it off with a quick one. A quick one that seems really fun. Only three minutes long. And then we will say goodnight. Or you can say hello to the next video if you just continue to watch. But it, it's the end of the night for me after this. Crazy wrong number caller. <laughs> Is the caller crazy or is the number crazy wrong? There's only one way to find out. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, go. So everyone has that one particularly hilarious wrong number story, and it's usually <gasps> in the form of a text message. Kind of. Apparently, some people consider it a good idea to text embarrassing information to a new number they yeah. just got from someone. Yes. I mean, wouldn't want to confirm you're actually talking to your friend Shannon when, in fact, you're telling a complete stranger all about your hemorrhoid uh. problem. <laughs> my hilarious wrong number story came from a full-blown conversation with someone on the other line who was irrational, to say the very best of it. One evening, I was lying on my bed, probably drawing, when I got a phone call from a number I didn't recognize. It was my area code, so I figured, meh, why not, this might be someone I know. I answered and said, hello? A younger-sounding woman answered back. Hello, who is this? Uh, uh you called me. Rebecca? So, do you know my husband, Chris Miller? Yes, I yes, go on. I didn't recognize the name of the guy, so I said, I'm sorry, who? Oh, you know full well who. What? My husband has been texting and calling this number for months. I checked his phone. I want to know who you are and why you've been talking to my <laughs> husband. Ah, here we go. Found the root of the problem. And I said what every single one of us says in this circumstance. Die. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. No, no, I don't, sister. Oh my gosh. In that situation, on, on the other person's side, in that situation, it's like this whole thing was built on lies. The situation she is going through in her life right now was built on lies. She's not even going to believe that she got the wrong number. That is incredible. That is incredible. Oh, no, I do not have the wrong number. I'm not buying that. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell me right now who you are and how you know my husband. Mary I guess Dinkle any other normal person would have hung up on her, but I'm not normal. If anything, I was curious to see where this conversation was going to go. My name is SpongeBob SquarePants, and I have absorbed your husband into my spongy flesh. <laughs> That's what this person's getting. If we're really going to press the issue, you really want to press it. You really want me to give you an answer. You're going to get an answer, but you might not like it. Ma'am, I don't know anyone by your husband's name. You clearly have the wrong number. Uh... You're just saying that because you don't want to admit you're seeing my husband. <laughs> Trust me, honey. I don't see any men, period. Let alone someone else's <laughs> husband. I don't believe you. You don't, huh? No. Could tell I'm a floozy over the phone, could you? Yes. I'm hanging up now. No, you're not. Maybe you should check the number you dialed again. It could be an honest mistake, you know. Are they gonna the call only back? The one who needs to be honest is you. Hello? Still here. Make this easy and just tell me how long you've been his mistress. Check the number! Check the number, you dingus! Check the number. Make this easy and just tell me how long you've been his mistress. My, how things- 25 years. Chris, you said his name was? You know exactly what his name is. You've been hooking up with him. Uh, oh, I see. Who did you say you were again? Velma Dinkley. <laughs> well, Velma, you can just go. Listen, this has been cute and everything, but honest to God, you have the wrong number. <laughs> I don't know your husband. I've never called him before. I'm trying to politely tell you that you've made a mistake. A very common one, in fact. Happens to the best of us. So why don't you hang up, check the number, and... The only number I need to check is how many times I'm going <laughs> to kick your... 
Oh, please call back. Good luck, Chris. Please You're call screwed back. no matter what you say. Oh, I wish they called back. I wish they, of course they wouldn't. There's literally no obligation for this person to call back and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. But I really wish that was a thing. That would have been so funny. I had a wrong number story just a couple weeks ago where I was moving and I was moving into my current apartment complex and I needed to call the front desk. So I went online. I didn't know the front desk number. So I Googled the front desk number so I could speak to the front desk. And the phone number that was on there was to a scam somewhere in the Middle East. Because like when they answered the phone, they spoke in such a weird like jar jarbled way that they wouldn't even like tell me who they were. I was like, this does not at all sound like it would be the front desk of this apartment complex. This person is talking about how they're going to assist me in my call and all this stuff. It was so weird that I got to the point, I was like, I'm sorry, I don't think I called the right person. Could you tell me who this is? And they were like, yes, of course, sir. This is blah, 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 blah. They're here to assist you on the same call, so stay on the line. Like, they talked in such a jibble jabble of gibberish that I couldn't even hear what they were saying. It's like, if you think someone has the wrong number and they called you, you, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, then you probably have the wrong number. Okay, see ya. You're not gonna try and keep them on the line unless, oh, you're a scammer. That's literally the only context. It got to a point, they were trying to sell me like grocery store gift cards and stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, the front desk of my apartment complex is not gonna do that. So when I did move in, I talked to the front desk and they were like, yo, someone edited our Google phone number and it was a scammer. So I just saved the day and I hopefully saved a few old couples from, you know, calling the wrong number and potentially getting scammed. But that was really, really weird. Anyways, friends, another three classics from Rebecca. I love this channel so much and you need to go and check it out right now. If you are not subscribed, check out Let Me Explain Studios. Rebecca did all the hard work. I just said the silly things and did some edits. Here's the full playlist of Let Me Explain Studios videos that we have done. If you haven't seen any of the other videos from this series, make sure you're caught up. Or here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. Thank you for watching my stuff. I appreciate you. Bye!